I will be using this with antimatter photon lasers because what I have is creation at the end of my thoughts. It's just like this glorious Technicolor world that you're in, you know? It's absolutely amazing. I was completely off the chart, um, as delusional as you can get. I wonder whether there was any trauma or anything. No, zero, zero, zero. How can we pull apart environmental factors and genetic factors? I think that's the real challenge. Marble waterfall, 100 feet tall there, coming all the way down, going down in those directions. <sighs> that needs a minute. <laughs> Do you just want to die? Yeah. Just want to face the wall and die. Love you, Mama. <laughs> you feel like your life's in danger, don't you? You you've told me that. Morning. Good morning. Most mental breakdown, I believe, come from the environment. It's a learnt set of, of reactions and responses. I think too often we, we ask what's wrong with someone rather than asking what happened to them and what kind of mental scars that may have left them with. to meet Paul in a large hotel golf club spa type place just outside Stratford-upon-Avon and I'm quite curious as to why I've got to meet him here um, but here I am. Are you Paul? I am. Hi. <laughs> I've been looking for you. Why, why did you want to meet here? It's a beautiful spot. Well, when I came here, I said the one place that I'm going to own as my home is what I've always called Time Castle. And naturally, the day I take over, we're going to put Time Castle where it's supposed to be, at the centre of everything that happens on planet Earth. Suite number 133 three is on the end. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that shall be my suite. Yeah. In the counter suite, most magnificent suite 
here will be Moses and the re and resurrection of Moses and his family and the Isa resurrection of Jesus Christ and his family in the back end, Solomon in the middle, a warring from there. And that's where I'll have the Pope stay when he's here, Vladimir Putin and Wen Jiabao in those others. So, who's told you you've got bipolar, Paul? Uh, uh, every psychiatrist that I've met, um, I've been labelled as being something that I'm nowhere near. My so-called bipolar disorder doesn't exist. I'm infinipolar, I see the whole of the moon, but the moment I step out of the box, <laughs> mental institution or jail cell. I wonder what happened, uh, whether there was any trauma or anything. No, not at all. No trauma before you had your first Zero. episode? Zero. 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 Can I have a bit more history about your life? Yes. Have you ever had any drugs? Um, I've tried every... I've tried most things in my time. Yes, of course. Oh, well, I, when they say I have bipolar disorder, I simplify it, saying, no, I don't have bipolar disorder, I have a split personality. I'm Paul and I'm Yah. There's nothing in between. It's not bipolar disorder, I'm Paul or I'm Yah. Yah sounds like a god. Just the name to me. Yes. He's the greatest mind there's ever been, and mine is. And we'll expose it piece by piece, whatever box by box. I've just met Paul, and, and wow. he seems to have a different reality to most other people. Nobody can understand what he's talking about. So it is a very lonely place to be. And I'm going to make this into the most amazing golf course in the world. Yeah. Having holes 111, 222, 3345, 666, 777, every digit there is covered. He has got that mania thing when you connect every single thing and he's taking it to the extreme. The 18th hole is going to be 777 yards long, par 7. There isn't a par 7. I wonder how we look after people like that because they don't see themselves as needing looking after. I mean, he feels completely like he's in charge of the entire universe. And remember, the mar marble waterfall, 100 feet tall there, coming all the way down, going down in those directions. And I can have it all installed in 60 days. From the day, of course, I take over the world, which effectively, July the 18th. get really... It feels like my skin is crawling. It's got better since I changed medication, but it never goes away. So I have um, a constant internal dialogue. So I actually hear my thoughts in my head. Steve started to notice that I was um, behaving different to usual. Gardening in the middle of the night and pouring rain. Hi, Hello. I'm Philippa. I'm Sean. How Come do you in. do? Hello. your ankle? Yes. yes. I've snapped it, I have. A snap? Yeah. Actually, when I did it, I was really manic. Were you? Yeah. 
and I was absolutely delighted, euphoric, because because I broke my ankle. I never broke my ankle before. Ha! Like taking photos, posting it on Facebook. Look at my leg. Everything tastes better, smells better. Everything is far sort of. All the colours are more vivid. Yeah. And um, that it's it's just like this glorious technical world that you're in, you know. It's absolutely amazing. It sounds great. It is. It's a lot of fun until I crash. My depression episodes. Do you just want to die? Yeah. Just want to face the wall and die. It's it's just. Uh... It's horrible. I, I get waves, you know, and mm. I just think I can remember Steve sitting there with the tears rolling down his face. Goodness, you've had a really rough mm. last 12 months, haven't yeah. you? We've been talking about your bipolar, mm -hmm. and I wonder if there was anything in the environment, you know, was there trauma in your childhood or...? or... Yeah, I'm really sorry, no. Nothing? <laughs> no. Nothing at all. I mean, I've been racking my brains for a good 20-odd years, mm. maybe more, 30 years, and I just think I had all the crap genes, the wild ones, you know? is a roller coaster. Mm. Um, it's worrying. Mm. Um, worrying because, especially when I was going to work, you don't know what you're coming home to. So whether that's whether she's depressed or when she's hyper, Shan's mood will dictate to the how the mood is in the house. Yeah. It's as if there's two different people in there. Yeah. It's like there's a switch. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's sort of like demoralising, I guess, because if she's again responsive, it sort of brings your mood down a bit as well. It rubs off on you, sort of. Thing. Yeah. When you see things a bit more clearly, then, I mean, the guilt comes and, you know, to the point where I worry um, if it is genetic, which one of my boys is going to have bipolar, which one of my boys is going to have to go through this. Mm. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Philippa. Hi, how are Pleased you? Pleased to meet you. Yeah, not too bad at all. This is my uh, grotto. It looks like you're very busy here. You've I am indeed. Yeah, I am indeed. I uh, play a lot of music. Actually, you know, this has made me feel really high doing all this. It's really just showing you your reaction to it. Now, that brings me to another point, because if your reaction was, you know, some negative yeah. thing, then I could go into a negative spiral, and this really is, does sum up the, my condition. 
take um, these are the pills I take. And that helps my asthma. I've got Dyson Pure when I need to calm myself down a bit. But How long have you had those? Uh, quite a long time now. And also I take Prozac as well yeah. for my depression. How long have you been on uh, that one? A long time as well. What, years and years and years? Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, it's sending me down again. You can yeah. tell, can't you? Mm, yeah. Mm. It wasn't great for you to talk about the med medication, was no. it? Do you want to talk to me about what's going on? Yeah, I would, actually, yeah. That's it. What, what, what are you experiencing right now, Ashley? I just don't know what it is, whether it's a voice or whether it's a thought or... I don't know what it is, but when I'm... Yeah, quiet. When I'm quiet, it, you know, it's like a... It keeps going. It keeps going. <laughs> yeah, narrative. You're quiet, but there's a voice dialogue, that keeps going, yeah. yeah. Dialogue. You know what's going through my mind? Sorry. Oh, it's just been difficult. He seems to be on a tightrope of sort of ecstasy and agony, really. It's such a narrow rope he seems to have to walk on. I don't know quite what's going on, and I've got more questions than answers, really. Bag of dolly mixtures? Yes, please. <sighs> right, I've got some actually that I don't take anymore. But I've tended to keep them there. Right, that's an antidepressant. These are the antipsychotics, which I take in the evenings. Have you found any of these drugs useful? <sighs> um, yeah, yeah. I know the combination isn't right yet, but they are managing to sort of quell the two extremes. Yeah. Can you imagine what you would have been like if you'd never been put on any psychiatric drugs? What would that be like? I'd be dead. No two ways about it. Definitely. They've saved your life. Yeah. Yeah. Any of the bad thoughts or any of the things which is... Um, I think it's about twice I've kind of yeah, been very low and mm -hmm. had contemplated to taking enough medication never to wake up. Mm -hmm. What do you think causes it um, and what do you think has caused it in Sean's case? Mainly the biological reasons, like brain chemical changes in the, in the brain is one of the main reasons. Sometimes like what we see is the, the depression comes out of the blue for no apparent reason. Yes. So if it is kind of an identifiable reason, then you can say, like, okay, treat the identifiable reason. But when it comes out of the blue, obviously there is something wrong within the brain chemicals. If individuals kind of normal mood or in, in see is either which goes too high, affecting yeah. the function. Yeah. So the low is the depression yeah. and the, mm -hmm. the medications do help right. uh, in bringing these chemical changes, chemical imbalances in the brain back to normal. Mm -hmm. We kind of equate it with people with diabetes, hypertension and things like that. The psychological treatment would help as a kind of an additional mm -hmm. support right. For her, that's why yeah. I preferred her for psychological treatment. But I feel that medication management mm. is the mainstay. Yeah. The mainstay of people never seen it.
next time. Bye. Take care and you. I've been told that bipolar is caused by a chemical imbalance and I, I wondered what you think of that. This has become a very well established idea over the last few years. Actually, there really is no evidence that bipolar disorder is caused by a chemical imbalance. There's not even an agreement about what chemical might be involved in bipolar disorder. So if these drugs don't work by correcting a chemical imbalance. How do they work? It's much more likely, in my view, that these drugs are working because they are mind-altering substances in their own right. Most of them are sedating. So they work well in calming someone down, and some of them also dampen down emotions. I've talked to um, some people with bipolar, and I asked one where would you be now without your drugs? And she says, I would be dead. It may be that people are using sedatives to try and block out their feelings. Right. Um, now, I'm not saying that's wrong. Maybe, that, maybe that's necessary for some people, but mm. I think in the long term, that's probably not a good way to deal with feelings that, that, that you can't tolerate. So that's suggesting that although the drugs might provide some temporary relief, they don't actually cure anything. Yeah. I will be using this with antimatter photon lasers because what I have is creation at the end of my thoughts. He understands all about the projects and he also understands me a lot better than many other people do, although not completely. Well, you leave me with Kevin now. I'll leave you and okay. see you in a... OK, see you in a while. See you in a while. How long have you known Paul? About three years now. He made a series of statements to me that, um, instead of just dismissing them, I went and found out. Um, on business-related issues, every single issue he's raised, I've checked out, has proven to be correct. Let me, first of all, just show you a big piece of stone. Okay. That, that piece of marble was extracted from a hill in northern Alabama. That is part of about 1.6 billion cubic feet that is known to exist uh -huh. in that location. And who owns it? Interestingly, a person called Paul Down. Come to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Mama. <laughs> Is he your only child? Yes, it took me 11 years to have him. We thought we'd win the pools. He was a treasure. His dad spent a lot of time with him, teaching him to play golf. 
there you are. He was an amazing golfer. Oh, he was good, yeah. Chosen for England. He was chosen, played for England. He was captain in England. Uh, it was lovely because the house was full of big cups. I won the English Amateur Championship at match play and stroke play. English Amateur stroke play there, English Amateur there, European Amateur Champion as well. That one, that one is here. What's it like to come second? Absolutely horrible. For me, second to last, there's no difference. If, if you're second or if, if, if you're last, what does that mean uh, to someone as a person? When, when I was playing golf, it would tear me up for... I could finish second in the tournament and it would take me three days of depression to get over finishing second. And I would be practicing eight hours a day, seven days a week. And if you didn't win all the cups, mm. and if you weren't the best intellect in the world, yes. then what would you be? I, I wouldn't want to live. I wouldn't want to exist. You wouldn't want to li exist unless you were the best? Absolutely not. I don't mean that's a conscious decision for the mania takes over. I think it's a sort of survival mechanism. Amazing how it goes for so long, isn't it? Hello. Hiya. Mwah. What are you hoping to learn about your genes? <sighs> that they're not crazy. That's all I want. I really worry that one of the boys is going to end up with bipolar and that I've passed it on to my children. I would, I'd be devastated. Mm. Are the boy's chances of developing bipolar increased because I have bipolar? It's not a genetic condition as if there is a gene yeah. for bipolar disorder. What we know is that there are many, probably many hundreds, even thousands of different genes mm -hmm. that are involved in increasing or decreasing the risk. If one parent has bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. we know that their children have about a one in ten risk of suffering with the oh, illness. Right. But on the other hand, they're at a 9 out of 10 yeah. chance of not having yes, bipolar yeah. disorder oh, over their lifetime. So the good news is, is that actually still the chances are you know, children won't have bipolar illness. That's a lot better than I thought, actually. Good. Yeah, mm. good. That's, that's quite comforting to know. How can we pull apart environmental factors and genetic factors? I think that's the real challenge going forward because environmental factors are also really key. Because environmental factors are passed on. Okay. You know, we, we learn how to self-regulate by yeah. how our, yeah. our parents self-regulate. So um, we'll, we'll learn their patterns of being and behaving. The evidence that we have from countless studies yeah. in family, twin, adoption studies, yeah. and the fact that the genetic studies now that we're doing are coming up with, with very strong and well-replicated evidence of particular genetic factors that influence vulnerability to bipolar disorder suggests that yeah. the hypothesis that it could be 100% environmental, yeah. you'd have to reject, actually. So that's yeah. a no, then? It's a no. <laughs> it's a very long, very complex no. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you.
I very reluctantly have to take on board the fact that genes may well have a determining factor into whether somebody develops bipolar or not. with these spells that he suddenly flashes out of them very very suddenly and that's been the case with them from the beginning how long has he had them about um, 12 no, no that was about 12 or 13. 12 yeah. what was he like as a baby uh yeah he was a lovely baby um in the first year uh, after that he started kind of missing the milestones he found it difficult to interact with other toddlers. Are you feeling a bit better? Gone away? Yeah. I'm it's just learning away. about you as a baby. <laughs> Don't talk about that. <laughs> Oh, you were a lovely baby, actually. You're a beautiful baby. Yeah. <laughs> when you were at school, Ashley, did anyone sort of know what it was like for you? Did anybody understand? No. Unfortunately, he was bullied a lot at school. I don't think he... He didn't always tell us about all of it. But I mean, really quite badly bullied, it kind of injured and that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And then we got to the stage where he was escaping from school. Yeah, it was a very hard time, actually. I actually, I think that you've, uh, he kind of bottled up all the, the upset and the frustration and you've got more kind of unhappy as the years have gone by and you feel like you're, your life's in danger, don't you? You've, you've told me that. I'm honest with you, it just begins the um, the thoughts even now, you know? That goes to my, my head. thinking about it now is that there was this little girl that was lost yeah. that nobody really understood it seems to me nobody could interpret your story of how you felt in a way that made sense to you mm. so there remained some dots that weren't joined yeah. up it and they've like Fragmented, you know? Fragmented, and they're still yeah. not joined up. No. I've got to sort of take a bit of a leap of faith, I think, to be able to sort of really be open to change, and that terrifies me. OK, look. Good luck, and I'll see yeah. you when you come out. And okay. hope it goes well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hiya. Hiya. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to just go in? Lovely. Thank you. 
today will be about seeing whether they can work together, seeing whether they can form a bond. It depends so much on your relationship with your therapist. I mean, she's got so much riding on it. I hope it works for her. How'd it go? Oh. <laughs> she was great. Oh, that's really, great. really great. I'm having a moment. This is the start of it now. This is the start of the end of it. Do you think this is going to be transformative? Mm. Yeah, thank you. We've been a long time coming. You know, the trouble with the um, I've got bipolar, it's a disease, or I've got bipolar, it's genetic, it closes down the whole exploration of what might be happening or what happened. I think she's beginning to see that she has got a choice, however difficult it is. I hope she gets her emotions to work for her rather than her being the slave to her emotion. Oh, it was not very good. I wasn't any. I felt like he wasn't really on my wavelength um, and uh, found it very difficult to actually uh, talk to him so he understands what I'm saying. You do so much to try and help yourself. I don't know anybody who works harder at working out what it is you need and asking for it. Yeah, thank you. Hello there. Hi, Hi Mike. Right. Pleased to see you again, mate. How's it going, Rupert, dude? All right, fella. Shoes off? Yes, please. Uh... <laughs> Why don't we lay a tune down and then you add lip on drums? Yeah, what, like um, a, a loop? Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea, yes. Yeah. Yeah, hang on. Wicked, that sounds awesome, man. Thanks, mate. Oh, man. Here, wait for it, though. Two, four, one, two, three, four, five. I can't change it, though, that's the only thing unless someone else plays it. Okay. One, Hello. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, this is what I this is what's gonna happen, isn't it? I knew it would. Bleeding wood as well. I just. God. Sorry, Philip. I really am sorry. I, I cannot apologise more. I can't. I can't. I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. He tries his hardest to keep himself calm, and a lot of the time he manages it, and he needs to give himself credit for managing it. This is 80, prog rock. I mean, what was uplifting about today is that his friends 
appear to accept him and accept his mood swings and don't seem particularly phased by them, and I think that's a great thing. Might give Ashley some sort of maintenance to help him feel better about the fact that he does have these symptoms. Cool man. Cool man. I'm a little bit nervous about seeing Paul, actually, because last time I did find him rather intimidating at times because he was so full on and uh, he made so many connections all over the place that I couldn't keep up with him. Hi, Paul. Hello, hello. Hi, good to see you You again. too. Come on in. A little bit different this time, I think. Are you? How did you feel about watching yourself? Well, I was completely off the chart, um, as delusional as you can get. What I felt at the time of recording was it was so hard to try and sort of... Well, you couldn't ask me any questions no. that, ma that made any sense because I was living in my own delusional world and, 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 you, and, you, and you were try trying to ask real world questions. I think there's a point here. That's where I'd redesign the golf course. That's right. When I last saw you, you were definitely in a mania. Yes. What does that feel like? Does it feel good? Uh, well, it feels absolutely fantastic. Whatever you want to happen will happen. And that you can do no wrong. And uh, ev everything, everything is going to work exactly as you want, e even absolutely ludicrous things. I think one thing uh, that exacerbated everything is, is I had a form of legal high. You were um, chain smoking yes. these odd cigarettes. Well, they weren't cigarettes. Virtually nobody has ever been as high as and delusional as I've been. You're even the best at that. <laughs> I, I've certainly gone higher than anybody else, I think. But of course, that means you go lower than anybody else, too. How are you feeling? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm down. I mean, I, uh, but I'm bouncing back a little bit as I'm beginning to get involved in sorting out the business activities. Yeah. You were an only child, so you weren't like one of the kids. So you didn't have that way of being average, if you like. And then, because you're a golf champion, and then a really very, very successful businessman, you never had any practice at just being another person. Well, that's definitely true, that part. And so, if something did go a bit wrong, then you hadn't got the ways and means or the practice of coping with that. So maybe your brain then just switches into the mania, so you don't have to face disappointment or... That's, uh, that's a possibility, in conjunction with the legal highs that have, that have, that have accelerated that yeah, to, sort an, of drug... to an incredible degree. A few years ago, they arranged appointments with a, a psychologist. What he said to me and it, it was that he spends virtually all of his time convincing people that uh, it's OK to be average. And of course, I've always rebelled against that and tried to excel in, in, in what, I, what I've done. Paul is undoubtedly a lot more sane than when I met him earlier. Um, he's not deluded anymore. But I do notice, even in his sanity, he has this all or nothing thinking going on. I'm either the best or I'm the worst. Uh, I'm more depressed than anyone else. I'm higher than anyone else. He describes his current depression as being circumstantial because he's 
at home looking after his mother and he's not achieving anything, he's not got any net worth. And I think that's sad because I think he is valuable. The people I've met all have their highs and lows and obviously suffer great distress. But I'm wondering how useful the bipolar diagnosis is because they're all so different. I feel it might be more helpful to approach everyone as individuals with unique issues. Because although being labelled bipolar may help some people make sense of their moods, it too often marks the end of self-exploration, when in fact it should really be the beginning.